I geometry. So six, seven polygons in the coordinate plane. So this is where geometry incorporates the algebra into um, quadrilaterals. So we're going to take a look at these different quadrilaterals in the coordinate plane and try to show what special type of quadrilateral they must they might be. So to begin, we'll go back to this hierarchy of quadrilaterals. So again, remember that the big distinction is the number of parallel sides. No pairs of parallel sides, one pair of parallel sides, two pairs of parallel sides. Now, if you have no pairs of parallel sides, then you must show that you have two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. If you're a trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides is all you need. If you're an isosceles trapezoid, you must show that the legs are congruent. And then for um, parallelograms, which have two pairs of parallel sides, if you are a rhombus, then all four sides are congruent. If you're a rectangle, then all four angles are right angles, which means that your consecutive sides are perpendicular. And if you're a square, you have both the rectangle and rhombus conditions. Okay. So how are we going to do this on the coordinate plane? Well, you're going to graph. You're going to look at the shape. And you're going to say, oh, it looks like this. But that's not good enough, right? I need you to show me. So whatever it looks like, you have to then show me which it, what it is. And to do that, we're going to use these formulas. Uh, first, the slope formula. The slope formula is going to let us see how many pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Now, we are simply going to count rise and run. So uh, you don't need to worry about this formula per se. Uh, it's also going to show us if our sides are perpendicular. Now, the reason we want perpendicular sides is because that means we're going to have four right angles, which would mean we are a rectangle. All right, so be aware of that. Uh, we're not going to focus on the diagonals. Okay. And then number two, you're going to use the distance formula. Now, for the distance formula, again, we're going to simplify things. So instead of it being x2 minus x1, we're just going to take the run and the rise because these are exactly what is in the slope formula and we're going to put them in and again i don't care what order it goes i think i actually do i think i do rise and run it doesn't matter so rise squared plus run squared inside the screw it doesn't matter it really doesn't and again remember we're going to ignore the negatives so everything is positive ignore the negatives and again we're going to use this to show if we have congruent sides. This would be most helpful for our isosceles. Oh, I'm sorry. For our kite, our isosceles trapezoid, and for our rhombus slash square. And I should put down here square as well for the four right angles. Again, uh, remember, you're only a square if you're both a rhombus and a rectangle. Uh, again, we're not going to focus on the diagonals, and then we're not going to need the midpoint formula for any means. Okay, so this is how we're going to do our problems today. All right, so I have three examples to show you. I'm going to make one per video because I don't know how long it's going to take to explain. Again, um, you'll see that there's three steps involved um, each time. All right.